Hey, welcome to today's video. I'm Prof Omar, and today we're gonna to talk about an interesting, surprisingly quite complicated integral. And the integral here is the integral from zero to pi over two of the square root of two tan x dx. Now, a natural way to start is by making a substitution for what's inside of this square root. And since anything inside of the square root has to be positive, which in this case it is, uh, because tan x is positive between uh, 0 and pi over 2, uh, we can substitute a u squared in for 2x, 2 tan x here. So we'll do that. We'll let u squared equal 2 tan x. And then our goal is to represent dx in terms of du. So if we differentiate each side, we get 2u du is 2 secant squared x dx. And secant squared is one plus tan squared. Now again, we wanna represent this in terms of u. Uh, so tan x we actually have in terms of u, tan x is u squared over two. So this is twice the quantity one plus u squared over two, all squared, dx. And so if we rearrange this, these twos go away we have that u all over one plus u to the fourth over four du is dx. Okay, now with this substitution, since x is going between zero and pi over two, that makes tan x go from zero to infinity. So our u is gonna go from zero to infinity and so our integral becomes the integral from zero to infinity of u, because this is the square root of two tan x, times all of this, which is u over one plus u to the fourth over four. So um, multiplying these two together, we'll have u squared over one plus u to the fourth over four du. Okay, and then multiplying by this four throughout, we can make this a four, get rid of this denominator, and then we'll have a four here. Okay, so the integral that remains here is this integral using this substitution. The integral from zero to infinity, four u squared over four plus u to the fourth du. And the question is, how do we figure out what this integral is? Uh, seems like we've left ourselves with a problem that might still be really difficult to deal with. For example, the derivative of this is a third degree polynomial in u, and this is a square here, so that doesn't quite work out. We could think that we could represent this as u squared squared, um, and then we have something that looks similar to an arctan, um, but mm, unfortunately we have a u squared here and not a u, which is the derivative of u squared. Um, so it'd be nice to do something slightly different to try to figure out what this integral is. And there is something really interesting that we can do, which is it turns out the denominator of this fraction actually factors. So let's see how that works out. In order to factor u to the fourth plus four, what we can try to do is complete this square by adding in the term we need to do that in the middle. And that term would be something like plus four u squared. But we can't just do that at random, we'd have to subtract a four u squared to balance this out. And then interestingly enough, this is u squared plus two all squared minus the quantity two u squared, which is the difference of squares. So we can factor this as the sum of these two, which is u squared plus two u plus two, times u squared minus two u plus two. 
Okay, so we'll use this factorization to help us uh, rewrite this fraction right over here. So our fraction is 4u squared now over u squared plus 2u plus 2 times u squared minus 2u plus 2. And we can think of maybe writing this as a partial fraction somehow. And instead of doing this explicitly, I'm going to play around and see how we can do this in a different way. Now, this fraction here um, for positive values of u, uh, this binomial for positive values of u is going to be slightly um, smaller than this one. So we'll put this over here and put this u squared plus 2u plus 2 over here. And we're trying to get a 4u squared in the numerator somehow. Um, so one way we could do this is if we have a u over here and a u over here, when we rewrite these by, say, adding them, we'd have something like a u cubed and a u cubed. If we wanted to get rid of those contributions, we'd actually have to subtract these two. And luckily, by doing that, we get a, four, a 2u squared here and a minus of negative 2u squared, which is exactly 4u squared. And then the contributions of the 2s go away as well. So this is another way to write this expression right over here. Since this expression here is the thing we had in the integral, we can then rewrite this as the integral from 0 to infinity of this quantity right here, u over u squared minus 2u plus 2 minus u over u squared minus or plus 2u plus 2 du. And so if we want to figure out this original integral by this factorization, we can figure out what the integral of this thing here is. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. So we'll take this step by step. Um, the first thing we recognize is that we can factor this by completing a square into u minus 1 squared plus some additional thing. And here we have u plus 1 squared plus an additional thing. So we might as well write the corresponding numerators in terms of the u minus 1 and the u plus 1 that we have. So here, for example, we have a u minus 1 squared. Uh, and then to get the 2, we need to add 1. And so we'll rewrite the numerator as u minus 1 plus 1, so that it's a little bit more manageable to see what the integral might be. Uh, and then here we have a similar phenomenon, where we write this as u plus 1 squared plus 1. And then we'll have a u plus 1 minus 1 over here on the top. Uh, okay, so... Now we're interested in these integrals. We'll do these one by one. And I want to be careful here because we don't know what's happening at infinity. So I'll rewrite this as the integral from 0 to b and then taking the limit as b goes to infinity um, just, just to take care of things here. So we have, we can split this up into a sum of two integrals. This one here in red and then this one over here. And we can do the same thing over here with these two integrals here. So we'll get the limit as b goes to infinity of the evaluation from 0 to b, which I'll write like this, of a few different quantities, the integrals in these different bubbles. Um, okay, so this first bubble here on the left, we have a u minus 1 and then a u minus 1 squared plus 1. So that looks like the logarithm of the denominator because the derivative of the denominator is 2 times u minus 1, which is just a little bit off from what the numerator is. So we'll get the logarithm of the quantity u minus 1 squared plus 1. Um, but then we're off by a factor of a half. And in fact, the same thing happens with this other red bubble over here. We'll get a minus one half. And I'll move this a little bit over so we have some space. 
we'll get a minus a half ln of u plus 1 squared plus 1 for this left contribution here. Okay, now on the right hand side, we have a 1 over something plus, a 1 over 1 plus something squared, that is an arctan. So we get a plus arctan of u minus 1. And similarly here, now we have a minus and a minus, so we'll get a plus. So we get a plus arctan of u plus 1. Okay. So there is our explicit expression. We need to figure out what this is. Um, so we'll group these, these two things together um, because we're going to be exploring a limit. So this is the limit as b goes to infinity of the quantity 1 half of ln of... We'll have this expression here, which I'll re-expand um, so we understand what the limit looks like. So we'll get u squared minus 2u plus 2. And then we're subtracting this so we can move this into the denominator over here together to get u squared plus 2u plus 2. And then we have plus arctan of u minus 1 plus arctan of u plus 1 evaluated from 0 to b and taking the limit as b goes to infinity. Okay, so first let's look at what happens um, at b as b goes to infinity. So here, as b goes to infinity, this quantity is going to go to 1 um, because we have a quadratic. The leading terms are these quadratics here, and they have the same coefficient. Um, so this thing is going to go to 1, which means that ln of it is going to go to 0. So at b, we get 0 for the contribution of this first term. Then we get the arctan of something that's going to infinity, um, arctan's graph looks something like this with asymptotes at pi over 2 and negative pi over 2. So this quantity is going to be pi over 2. And this quantity is going to be pi over 2 as well. It's the same kind of limit. And now we're subtracting what happens at 0. At 0, here we get 2 over 2, which is 1. So we get ln of 1, which is 0 itself as well. And then we get arctan of negative 1. Arctan of negative 1 is negative pi over 4. And then we get arctan of 1, which is pi over 4. Okay, so putting all this together, here we have pi, and here we have 0 to give us a final integral value of pi. So quite a complicated integral. If you look at all the pieces, we started with a substitution and the substitution got us to a place that seemed um, a little bit complicated. But once we factored the denominator in this interesting way, we were able to separate this into two integrals that looked kind of familiar and got us to our final answer. So I hope you liked today's video. If you did, click the like button below. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel and click the bell for notifications.